What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Fanatic Island. Is your home for sports and sports entertainment? Do not be alarmed. I am here. You do not see me on camera. Uh, I'm on the ones and twos. I'm behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. We have Lashanti, the siren, here with us on a you know a good sandbar. Sit down, nice sandbar. Sit down. We'd like to thank Prince for finally coming back on the island. Before Kadim. Before (laughs) Kadim. Don't forget to check out Kadeem's World Podcast streaming live on all, you know, platforms. Streaming live where Kadeem World streams live. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'm going to turn over to the guys on the screen. Oh, wow. And they will guide you through this process. But, you know, um, if you're watching the video, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're listening on any audio platform, this is the Firestar reading. Let us know what you think. We're doing this for you guys. But... Kadero signing off. Guys on the wow, screen. Sign Your off. turn. All right. All, all right, you we're guys. here. It's Makari again, of course. We're here with Lashanti the Siren. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, would you like to tell the people what it is you do? The main thing, right? The main thing. The main thing that I do. The main Um, thing. So I am a marine conservationist, science communicator, and siren, um, as you so beautifully said. Uh, Most of my work deals with conservation, specifically in the marine environment. But one of the most important things about the Bahamas is that we're coastal. Um, Most countries can't really say they're coastal because, you know, that's defined by how close you are to the ocean. But, you know, each part of Nassau, each island you go on, you're like right there to the ocean. So we are Mm. a coastal nation. Um, And so a lot of my work also ends up on land as well, which is why I'm here <laughs> on okay. land. And like you said, you are a marine conservationist or coastline conservationist too as well. <laughs> so Fair. what I would like to ask is what sparked that interest in you? I mean, we know that how important the ocean is to us, especially as bombers, but as a world as well. Mm-hmm. Like we can pretty much say life comes from that, I guess. Yeah, I think what well, humans are like 70 or 80, over 80 percent yeah, water pretty much, mm-hmm. yep, pretty much. <laughs> is it not like the same thing with yeah. the earth I, yeah. I think the earth's surface is what 70 percent water yeah it's definitely more than that um, i think point, when yeah, they've yeah. updated it um because i know uh, the bahamas our country is mm. almost 90 percent yeah ocean even though we have you know 700 wow. islands and keys yeah um but yeah uh for me mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> why did i get into marine conservation um well, I grew up in Nassau, New Providence, uh, like most Nassauvians do. But I always felt like I grew up on a family island because mm. I lived on the way, like outskirts of the of the island, um, which is Coral Sounds Harbor. Like me. Shout out to <laughs> Coral Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I felt like my experiences growing up was always just closely tied in with nature. Um, I loved being outdoors. Fortunately, I have a twin brother, <laughs> so he was like my immediate like biological bodyguard. Anytime I had to go outside, he would be there with me, even though he wanted to play video games. <laughs> Which is fine. We, we balanced. Um, okay. <laughs> but I always loved going in the ocean. Um, and I was always fascinated by animals as well and just the world around me. So I think um, I naturally initially wanted to be a veterinarian because I was mm. like, oh, you know, I want to save the animals. I want to go and pick up the strays. We have so many strays here. Um, but I also said, but I really love the ocean. Yeah. So I said, oh, I'll be a marine animal veterinarian got in college um, and very quickly realized that you know vet school was just not for me uh i interned at a vet clinic in miami and well i guess because it's not a clinic here i'll expose them but they like used crazy glue (laughs) on what What? on what on what on On a little kitten's wound like they were shaving the hair or was it a doll it was a puppy I don't think you shave kittens. And I, I, name, so I, don't I can't even that. remember the name. That was I'm not that I'm that old, uh-huh. but it was a while ago. And I remember just thinking, okay, that's a bit weird. And then I remember just watching them stick an IV into a kitten. And the kitten's screaming and I'm in the corner like, Argh. so I realized, you know, I know I didn't like needles, but I thought, oh, maybe I could, I could give a needle. Mm-hmm. Quickly said, you know what? I'm just going to stick with marine conservation and just hyper-focus into marine biology. I wanted to be a researcher, but I found out really quickly that I like talking to people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my work always was in this like informal education space and just kind of connecting people with the ocean um, and all the animals in it. And so one of the biggest things that I try to do and that my nonprofit is supposed to be doing is just connecting Bahamians to conservation, but to the ocean as well and to each other. So my favorite quote that I first said, I think, uh, in 2017 is Bahamians feel like we're separated by the water, but really it's what connects us. So. 
Yeah, that's powerful. Great, that is a powerful quote. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, based on what she said, do not be afraid to pivot from whatever it is that you think you want to do into something exactly. else. Exactly. You may <laughs> see a cat wounds being crazy glued together and decide <laughs> that's not the route you want to go. But <laughs> you would have mentioned again, like your love for the ocean, your love for the water. So, the I'm going to ask a Bahamian question: How mm-hmm. did you learn how to swim? Did you get that the sink or very, swim method, very or did you get Bahamian formal question. training? You know, I actually, my father actually recently reminded me of this. I just always thought I knew how. <laughs> but apparently, I almost drowned. Uh, did he throw you in? No. My brother and I, we were playing on the beach, you okay, know, okay. not far from our house. And fortunately, our parents were also, you know, on the shore. Yeah. And I'm bubbling. And my brother kind of, like, was able to pull me out. And so my dad immediately put us into swim lessons. Apparently, I was at Barracuda Swim Club. Shout out to that swim club. Apparently. Um, yeah. Like, I had, I had no idea. Like, I had no recollection of that wow. until he said it, which I was like, what other things am I suppressing? You know, like. Poor memory a lot. Right. And you just fast forward and you're like, I know how to swim. Yeah. I, you know, I just always thought, oh, you know, I'm a mermaid. I know how to swim. Like, it's a thing. So, yeah, so yeah that's, um, that's how it was for me. So. I think that was before like kindergarten or maybe right in around that age of five or six where I was really proficient at swimming. Like so you're I, a formally trained siren, not like one of those like <laughs> most of us who would have either been tossed into the sea yeah, yeah. and had to you know make your way back. Yeah, yeah sink or swim. So, okay, yeah. pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. So with the siren model, there, there's a lot of conceptions that comes along with it. Do you think it's related to your love for conservation in that? The beauty of the ocean lures you in, but the depths of it that you don't quite mm. understand is a bit That's is a bit more. That's poetic. That, that is poetic. <laughs> That's not what it is, though. I think, <laughs> I think my actual reasoning is more poetic, but I'll, mm-hmm. I'll give you that. Um, so I actually sing as well. Okay. Surprise. Um, I sang and performed all through elementary, high school. I starred in musicals, um, was on choirs, things like that. And so I, I wanted to be a singer for a very long time in my life. But, you know, as most Bahamian parents are, if you're good in science, then you do that. You, yeah. Ain't, yeah. you ain't doing nothing else. I already else. pay for this. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, you could sing on the weekends. So, um, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I always... Like speaking, like singing, like performing, and so, and I like mythology. Uh, so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not just a mermaid, I'm a siren. But I don't use my voice to lure people to the rocks and kill them. I use my voice <laughs> to lure people to the rocks and educate them in hopes mm-hmm. that they will conserve the rocks that we live on. Because, you know, most people, when they talk about the Bahamas, like a Bahamian, oh, I go on back to the rock or I on the rock. Yeah. So for me, that was just like such a beautiful connection. So there are many mermaids here, there's only one siren mm-hmm. so far. Nice. So the difference between a mermaid and a siren is the voice. Um, or is it cultural hmm. when it comes to differences? Ooh. Actually, I don't know. I would just say it's because it's me. Mm. <laughs> but mm. I don't think any of the other mermaids, the other Bahamian mermaids, I don't think any of them sing. Um, one of them had asked me to dress up and sing for kids before. Um, haven't done it yet. But, yeah, no. And I think... The stereotypical, like, you know, Bahamian girl in marine conservation, light skin, blonde highlights. So I very was very intentionally was like, no, I'm going to darken my hair. Okay, okay. Because I wanted, I just, I don't know, you always want to be a little different. Um, and I think we're all great at what we do. And, you know, I just choose to express myself in that way. Uh, all right, so the siren. Going with the, because you would have mentioned the informal and formal education space on the conservation side. Were you able to marry the voice that you have? Yeah, I'm going to access the alto or soprano in the informational <laughs> sessions. Definitely alto. <laughs> I sometimes, some, some soprano notes I could slip in. When I was an okay, undergrad, okay. I did do vocals. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had me singing opera, which was a very physically interesting experience. Shout opera. out to all the wow. opera singers. Like, I would mm-hmm. literally leave those classes with, like, lightheadedness. Mm-hmm. Um, but... I actually, and I'm sure there are people who might end up watching this, like, I've been waiting. I'm actually supposed to get into the studio. Um, I do have some songs that I've wow. written. <laughs> wow. Okay. Surprise. Exclusive, right? Wow. <laughs> this is like another <laughs> layer that like, I did not know about. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have two parts of this interview right now. We're interviewing what? the siren. We'll talk more about Lashanti later. <laughs> yeah, <now>. so. yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I have, I've had ideas to do that. Um... I have a few songs that I've written that are obviously more kid focused. Mm -hmm. Um, Just kind of because I think that there's a space for that where there are not a lot of Bahamian centered things and especially not conservation centered things when it comes to music. So 
little quick songs about the conch, you know, nothing crazy. Okay. Um, sort of, some of them are just to the tune of like the nursery rhymes. Um, there is this one particular song that actually inspired this. Uh, it's I'm a Coral Polyp <laughs> to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. And that was actually written, I think SeaWorld did that with their education program. And that really what made me think, oh my gosh, there's so many things that we could do that with where you just take the nursery rhyme, but you bohemianize it yeah. to marine conservation. And then now the kids can learn about the conch, you know, so. You know, they love to say Strombus Gigas. Strombus Gigas. Alice you know, Gigas? Is it, wait, well, is Alice or Lobatus? Lo we skipped Lobatus already. Oh. So we switched from, yeah, so use a real Alice Gigas. You ain't know that. I must be old. <laughs> but yeah, actually the conch has undergone two name change in the last few years. Wow. The giggiest of the giggiest. Wow. There wow. you go. <laughs> I know him by it. So I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that, that is a lot. So considering your yeah, love for conservation, Marion, you know, the whole siren aspect to it, what do you think is something that us as Bahamians should know that we don't necessarily know in, to, uh, in the ways of conservation? I know there's things like the size of the cone, gloss mm-hmm. of tails and stuff like that, but what is something that you think should be more commonplace that we don't necessarily talk about. It's so many things, and I can't wow. think of one to pull out right now. All but right, I give, think give us three. Yeah. one of the no, three. Well, one, <laughs> the, the top I'm one. I'm struggling for one. The top. Um, I definitely say one of the biggest things, um, and I, I actually give credit to Dr. Anselino Davis for this, another Bahamian um, conservationist. He does marine and terrestrial. A lot of times Bahamians have this concept, and this may also just be like a, a dig at a few Bahamians, this concept of just once I throw it away, it's gone. Mm. When you, you can't just throw something away. You have to put it somewhere. You have yeah. to repurpose it in some way. Um, we already get so much pollution and so much waste from other countries. We're generating too much on our own. Yeah, and destroy energy. <laughs> right. And so even just as simple as like me having a water bottle, right? Like I travel with this everywhere and any opportunity I get to fill it up, that's how I hydrate myself. I don't go out and purchase another plastic bottle. No offense, because I saw you bottle yes. earlier. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not, I, I think I get it. I yeah, get it. It's okay. I think the biggest <laughs> thing is just knowing that it's not that hard to be a conservationist. There's this assumption that it's for rich white people. It's not, right? It's for everyone who cares about the environment. And even if you want to look at history and the way, you know, the, the Arawaks and the Lucayans, the way they interacted with their environment, it was very sustainable. It was very conservation-minded because they didn't want to just destroy it mm-hmm. and not have it for later. They didn't want to use things only once. I mean, when they would eat things, they would use the bones to make tools. And, you know, mm-hmm. so I think um, it's just not that hard, guys. Just be sustainable, you know? And I think just taking small steps to that big change. Like you don't have to change everything all at once. You don't have to stop eating meat. You don't have to completely cut out plastic from your life, but just making those small intentional efforts, you're a conservationist and you care. And take your trash off the beach on the holidays. I Every holiday, it's filled with bottles, mm-hmm. wine bottles, collect bottles. Like I almost want to go and ask these companies to, to put on their bottles, please do not leave me on exactly, the beach. Exactly, yeah. You got other fast food restaurants that are not paying for this, so I won't say their names, but the classic ones. <laughs> Thank you. Right, you know, but they're the, I, even, I already call the alcohol companies, but you know, it's like, I just don't understand why people think that it's just gonna go away just because they didn't take it with them. So no. that, that was my spiel. Yeah, and I think the, <laughs> When we say save the planet, I don't think people understand that that means saving ourselves. Because when it comes to the Earth, the Earth has been through a lot more than us. Like, it could survive certain things. So, we can't. We're, when we say save the planet, we're just meaning the climate that we can live in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if you destroy that, you're probably going to die. Most likely going to die. I'll probably, yeah. I was say <laughs> yeah, you're, you're definitely going to die. The planet will survive without yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. Me. It's it's waiting. We're like so, this pimple on it. Yeah. Like, so I think when people hear I say the planet, they're like, "Why do you see the planet? They're gonna die anyways." But no, your whole next of kin will be gone. I know all that stuff. But what my question, my next question would be is, what do you feel is the most detrimental things for conservationists like yourself? For conservationists like myself. For conservationists. Yeah. Um, I think it's the assumption that what we're doing or what we're trying to do, because we haven't accomplished it yet, um, is for our own benefit. When mm-hmm. really I think you'll find that conservationists or anyone that works in this space, we don't do it for money, I could promise you. <laughs> we don't do it for the money. It's You will find some of the nicest, most giving, passionate people just because 
uh, what we do is not based on the money or ourselves. It's literally because we want to see the world be a better place for everyone. So I think um, that's detrimental because oftentimes they'll hear a conservationist saying, hey guys, let's save the turtles. And, and real example, no, you don't want to save the turtles. You just want us to stop eating turtles so we can't have turtle soup anymore and you don't even care. And it's like, no, that's not it at all. No, I, no. I, I, would, I wish I knew what it tasted like, maybe. I would, <laughs> you know, but so it's things like that. Like they think that we make these decisions or we, well, sorry, we don't make the decisions. They think that we make these recommendations for selfish reasons. And I'm yeah. like, man, if I had my own island, I wouldn't even bother you. You know, but we're all living here. And I think um, that is the biggest detriment is when they don't want to work with us. It's almost like this intentionally working against us with this assumption that anything that they say is for their own benefit or for the rich white people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And speaking of people, you know, not be, being to their own detriment, what group, I'd say, less age-wise, you think is more receptive to what, you, what conservationists do in general? Like, is it the hardest to go with, let's say, people in the 30 to 40 range because like they're just so involved in their own lives, like conservation is not on the forefront of their mind, or is yeah. it like the younger generation because they just don't care? Like wh wh what generation do you think is easily, most easily reached? The young generation, hands down. Um, I think the tide is turning just as far as, you know, obviously our country is run by dinosaurs. No offense to the government. No, that's that's real. <laughs> facts um, are facts. <laughs> right. Very slow turnover. And I find that I would definitely say um, you have people who are in their mid to late 30s. I mean, I wouldn't knock off too many 40-something year olds because I know a couple. Maybe I'll go from 45 down. Okay. This, this is now where I feel like the shift is happening. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids, um, high schoolers and down, the ones that I've interacted with over my last maybe... <clears throat> 10 years of working professionally in the field are really passionate and some of them are very scared i remember there was this one girl who approached me just well how can i you know how can i convince my parents like how can i convince the government and i'm like write a letter they're not gonna listen to me i'm we're, i'm gonna be an adult and then you guys are gonna leave us with crap and i'm like you're right <laughs> see, see the funny thing is they have youtube as well they do they do <laughs> and yeah so you know i think they're trying. Yeah. They're, they're very interested. I've heard of stories where um, after a child has attended maybe like a you know informal, oh, let's learn about the conch kind of thing, mm -hmm. they'll go home to their fisherman father and be like, hey, that conch's too small. And then the mom would be like, hey, did you teach our kids? That we're <laughs> we try to eat. We're to eat. Yeah, like what we're doing is illegal. And it's like, sorry, yes, but sorry. So, so they're very receptive. And I think yeah. the ones who are the teenagers who are actually tapped in are scared. Genuinely, because yeah. the world's on fire, man. Like, it is, yeah. I, I always tell people, we're not at the point anymore where it's preventing climate change. It's here, yeah. guys. It's adaptation now. We can't mitigate anymore. It's all about figuring out how we're going to live with these hotter temperatures, not how we're going to delay them. So, wow. not to gloom and doom. <laughs> I believe the children are Well, <laughs> I guess the pivot from... The that, was, that was a dance. <laughs> that was a dance. <laughs> we know that you're not just a conservationist who, you know talks about it you fully immerse yourself mm. with the ocean you're a diver as well i do i do scuba dive i haven't in a while unfortunately mm -hmm. um my recreational time has been taken up by other things but um yeah i do scuba dive i think every bahamian should get the opportunity to do it um a lot of organizations are actually creating opportunities for bahamians to do it i know that they're the most recent example um there's this group called Black and Marine Science. It's a U.S.-based but international nonprofit started by this really cool girl, Dr. Tiara. I, sorry, I can't remember her last name. She's American. And they actually, with the Nature Conservancy, just paid for, I think, about like eight or ten um, Bahamians to oh, get scuba wow. certified in Eleuthera. They flew them all to Eleuthera. All expense paid. And it's like the opportunities are there, yeah. but it's not getting – I mean, it could have been bigger. It could be bigger next year, but it's, it's very easy – very easy to get scuba certified. It's just the money. So, okay. um, but I think everyone should. I think when you see the world from beneath the ocean, it's just like mm -hmm. I almost got a little emotional just now. <laughs> so, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. I think you guys should do it. Are you? Either of you? I'm, I'm, I'm not, not certified. But I like to be. <laughs> well, speaking of certified, what would be the process to being scuba certified? I know you said like the cost is kind of one of yeah. the biggest yeah. deterrents, but outside of that, like, what's the process like? 
Yeah, so I know a lot of, uh, usually you have to go to a dive shop or a certified dive instructor, um, and there are actually a lot on the island. Um, I know the last place I worked, shout out to Perry Institute for Marine Science. Um, their training director, she's trained a lot of Bahamians to be dive instructors who are now able to train other Bahamians in scuba certifications. You can do it in either a three-day or a five-day process where you learn the material. You do some short quizzes, open book. It's, you just literally just learning ways how not to die underwater. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that's, I think that's the best way to say it, which actually scares some people when you say it like that, yeah. right? But it's just, you know, understanding the mechanics behind, you know, you're going under and getting more pressure on your body. Don't and like, up. you're going to feel like this <laughs> and listen for that. And so once you do that, you do about four or five dives and then you're open water certified. Okay. Yeah, I did mine in three days. So it's very easy. Very fun. Yeah, and you learn how to use a compass, what to do if you get lost, how to help somebody, how to share air. Like, just all the basics of how not to die underwater. Yeah. No, just the, the behavior in me. I, I got sinus problems, man. It's all water. Is do this. Or my, my ears is don't, you know. Ring in, ring in. Yeah, so all those, like, little <laughs> things. Are there any, like, kind of, I'd say, medical conditions or kind of, concerns you would have going into it if you do want to get certified that you kind of be need to be wary of yeah the and that's actually a great example the ear thing is a big flag mm -hmm. if you can't equalize then stop don't even and unfortunately I, i've met um another conservationist who she's limited to just snorkeling because wow. it's some imbalance with her Oh, what's the curly one Cochlea? called? Yes, and she tried to dive. She, <laughs> <laughs> she tried, it. but yeah, it's it's too much pressure, and you could literally you could pop your eardrum like that, you know, and and yeah, you can cause a lot of damage if you can't equalize because all that pressure is in your head. Wow. So there are people who unfortunately, and they were unaware, you know, of these until they start getting down there, which is why your very very first dive, you have like one instructor paired with just you. Because they got to make sure to watch for some of these things because mm -hmm. you just never know. So. Wow. So we'll, yeah. what would you say was the deepest depth? That in, I've ever done? Yeah. 120, I think, or give or take a couple of feet. Yeah. It's really easy to do that, like, on the wall, like the underwater really? wall. Yeah. Okay. Because that goes down, like, thousands of feet, but on a really clear day. I actually, I didn't even realize I had done that. This was before I got advanced. Don't do that at home. <laughs> and my friend was the dive instructor with me. And I was just chilling on the dive, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm like looking around. Nobody there. No one's around me. <laughs> and then I hear the little, because you tap your tank, you know, sound travels faster on the water. And I hear okay. like a tap, tap, tap. And I look up and my friend is like way above me. And they were like, you know, come up. And so I come up. And I, when I, was, I was coming up, when I looked at my depth meter it was like a hundred and something i was like oh my god wow how did i get down here you know but it was beautiful it was yeah. wow yeah. and you do see the sharks and they are just see the sharks yeah so casually <laughs> i know right yeah, no i think i definitely would say sharks are like stray dogs if you have food if they smell something they'll come at you mm -hmm. if you don't they're curious they'll come close but yeah, I've had one um, when I was doing surveys underwater. You have to hold like a PVC pipe mm -hmm. and write on it, write underwater, which is also a fun fact. You can write underwater with a pencil. A lot of people didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. That. Really? Like a regular number two pencil. <laughs> yep, with underwater paper. Like once it's not um, underwater it's paper. <laughs> yeah, or like laminated paper. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you write underwater. <laughs> With a regular paper, I mean, regular pencil um, and underwater paper, which is just designed to not absorb, you know, the moisture. Mm -hmm. And you can always erase and use that same sheet again. Um, or the eraser could, works too? <laughs> yeah, you can erase underwater. <laughs> you probably got people drawing the ocean on there. Yeah, well. No, you have people, if you sit long enough, like if you don't know the fish that you're trying to ID, they actually tell you to draw it. So you, sometimes I'll come up with like sketches. Wow. Not the very good you know, ones. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was holding the pipe, and I'm pretty sure I looked like a spear fisherman. Mm -hmm. And I was like writing, and then I look up, and this shark, the thing's about, I don't know, not a meter. Is this a meter? That's like three feet. Point is, the shark was at the end of my PVC pipe uh -huh. T-bar, and I just like popped up, and I froze, and then it swam away, and I was like, did I almost die? <laughs> 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 like, did this just happen? And so I obviously just Every floated day. a bit. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. but yeah, you once you see your first shark, then the rest of them get pretty easy. 
They're really not that your bad. Your first shark. Once you see your first shark, <laughs> the rest are pretty easy. You heard that, everyone? Just have your first shark and you're good. <laughs> you're good. The first one's the hard one. <laughs> first time's the hardest. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I know in terms of conservation, coral reefs, um, yeah. rest- coral reef structure, because I think the Bahamas is what, the second largest, if not the largest, um, naturally occurring coral reef that we have. No, I'm like... That? Um, we have the third largest barrier reef, but there are mm. countries based on their countryside that you would say are more dense with coral. Mm. So, for the Caribbean, <laughs> uh, we do have we're the one with the most, and I think if you count the entire Caribbean, thirty percent of those reefs are in, in the Bahamas. Mm. Wow. So, from all the countries in the Caribbean, we have thirty percent. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good numbers. Yeah. And what, what do you think we can? Is there anything that we can do in terms of protecting coral reefs? Because there. From my understanding, like the reef is kind of the breeding ground for everything. Just a, yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. Like, so if you kind of lose the reef, it's like losing the bees for you know pollination. Like, mm-hmm. if you lose the coral reefs, you lose the ocean. Like, yeah. What, what do you think? There's things that we can do as Bahamians or just people in general who may be listening. So you can, I think it's an international view. Yeah. Like that. We, um, yeah. What we can do to kind of <laughs> save the coral. Um. Hmm. Because right now. Stony coral tissue loss disease is running rampant in the Bahamas. Yeah. And there's really nothing we can do, um, especially given some of the official tie. Like, there's a lot going on in politics that are preventing the adequate permits to be given to the researchers who have methods that have been proven to treat this disease. It's not the cure, but it will treat the infected no. area and stop the spread. Um, wow. Unfortunately... That's the biggest threat right now. Um, and the only thing that Bahamians can really do is to advocate, you know, and we don't like to do that. Sadly, we don't want to go to the government and say, hey, please do this. We wait for the government to tell us what to do. Yeah. But that's not what this show is about. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why having your own brand, you can say whatever you want because you represent yourself, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> honestly. She's not wrong. She's honestly, not wrong. yeah. She's if I wrong. was representing someone else right now, they'd be like, the shanty, you can't say that on TV. Oh my God, like this is public. But I can say what I want. You can say what you want still. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think Bahamians, uh, the, the one of some of the biggest, more regular threats would definitely be um, people like to dump things in the ocean still. Um, oil, specifically. Mm. Um, and you have mm-hmm. to be careful if you're living near the ocean, which most of us do. Yeah. The types of fertilizer you use if you have any sort of agriculture or just mm. you just garden and you have it because when it rains... Surface runoff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we do have a water table that's under most of the island. Um, so that will, can cause issues with um, algal blooms. The algae will then grow really rapidly and like create a coat on top of the water. You know, coral are living animals, which is also an interesting thing that people don't know about, but they thrive because they actually have some algae that lived in their cells. So, in this, I feel like I'm doing a lecture right now. <laughs> we listen and we, <laughs> we're here. Learning. So, in their cells, these zooxanthellae, which is the um, plant like organisms in their cells, actually photosynthesize, right? And we all know what that is use the sun, oxygen, light. Oh. Yeah, that thing. Um, point is, that's how they get most of their food. Will they survive with them gone? Hardly, and eventually they don't. But um, once you get the water blocked, whether it be oil or these algal blooms, they die. So wow, it's small. Like there's little small things right that you can do. Um, sometimes the sunblock that you use can have like the oils in it that if you get too close to the reef, it'll actually like poison the coral. So you want to always look Yikes. for coral safe sunblock. Um, which is very important for the tourists that come to the country. So please purchase coral reef, coral reef safe sunblock. Um, but also just don't touch it. Mm. People think that, oh, I can break a piece off or, oh, I'm going to try and touch it. No, don't touch it. You'll kill it immediately. I swear. We don't want that. So And be mindful with your boats. You know, everybody on this boat life tip, please don't <laughs> anchor on the reef. And people do that. They think they see the reef as a rock. No. Find a piece of sand, find a mooring buoy or something. Just, but yeah, that's (laughs) threats to coral. (laughs) Not what you guys tuned in for, but you're here for it now. (laughs) No, they wanted it. They wanted it. (laughs) They're getting it. So, also, I want to ask how do we convince Bayman to eat lionfish? You cook it. I mean, like, (laughs) you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I think 
so oh, like we a group of snob, but they like, okay, you have uh, lionfish. Do you want to eat this lionfish? It's invasive. Do I want to eat the lionfish? Like, do we have to trick them in this? Like, yeah. No, some, some, say, some, I want no lionfish. Some fish, restaurants just have like fish on the menu, <laughs> and you don't know where that is. I yeah, want no exactly. lionfish. Like, yeah, you know. No, I think we should start calling it the other grouper. <laughs> <laughs> Because some of these restaurants, they're not giving you grouper anyway. Oh, yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> and I think, I've, have you guys had lionfish? I have. You I have? haven't had it yet. <gasps> I haven't had it yet. Sorry. It tastes closer, so. to, it tastes closer <laughs> to me. It tastes closer to grouper than the grouper they say they give you. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. The texture is a lot better. It's a really solid fish. And the, the more we encourage restaurants to serve it, mm. the more fishermen will actually catch it. And then the more people are willing to try it. Mm. Um, that's, I think, oh, I think another way to make it easier is this whole, um, you know, we have group of closed season, but a lot of these restaurants skirt by by saying, oh, well, these have been in the freezer. Stop lying. <laughs> Stop lying. Like, I've seen fishermen still selling grouper because they know that restaurants are still going to buy it. Exactly. And so I, I personally feel like the closed grouper season should stop any serving of it. Like, you're not allowed to even serve it. So get mm. rid of the grouper before the closed season, you know. But I ended up with them. But um, I think also just um, just getting more people exposed to eating lionfish. And that's the best way. I mean, it tastes really good. It tastes really good. I take your word. No, trust me. I'll taste it. Really good. I, yeah, I'll taste it. I would, if I had to choose, and I'm not just saying it because I could say whatever I want. Yeah. I would actually pick lionfish. I recently had some lionfish wow. tacos a couple of weeks, uh, three weeks ago. It was really good. Like, you, if you season that just right, and mm-hmm. I had like I had lionfish ceviche, and I was like, why aren't we eating That's this? That's how I had it. Oh, it was so good. It's wow. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, like a little bit of grilled lionfish, like with some herbs on the, mm. like just grill it on. Mm. Who's serving lionfish? Now I gotta that's go. What I, that's what I try to figure out. That's the issue, right? That's what I try to figure out. Because we say in this Where are y'all getting this from? Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's a good Saturday to go find some lionfish. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you do listen to this, please go and look out for some lionfish. Yeah, I feel like Green Parrot used to have lionfish tacos because that's the dock where they used to do the lionfish derby. Mm. So they would just take the lionfish and, you know, it's really easy once you know not to get poked by the spine and then you won't have an allergic reaction. But, yeah, it's um, it's good. Well, uh, when I find it, I'll let you know because I'm definitely an advocate now for people eating lionfish. So. Okay. <laughs> but going back to you know, you being the siren, of course, I want to ask what your thoughts are on the Little Mermaid, the new release. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people have asked me this. I've had international <laughs> you, you people. Should, you should know it was coming. Me, you yeah, should know. And I actually, I should have known. And I still didn't watch it in time. Wow. <laughs> I've not seen it yet as of, what, June 10th? Uh-huh. Um, my life be like. <laughs> Ooh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think it's great. I think it's important that people, especially when it comes to things that are not real, right? Like, mm. I mean, sorry, mermaids are real. <laughs> I just think, I think it was a great move. I think Disney made a great move. Um, I'm hoping it's not tokenism, um, similar to... What is it, Tiara, the Princess Tiara from the Frog? And yeah, the, yeah the where frog. she was what, like a frog most of the movie. Mm. Um, I think it's good. I think it's a good step forward. I think it shows little black girls that they can be whatever they want to be. Sometimes they're often boxed in by the image of, well, it can only be someone of this particular skin color or light skin or dark skin or, you know. So I think I think it was a good move. I'm excited to watch it. I've heard some really great reviews about it. I think Haley is a great singer. So yeah. I'm excited to hear, you know, her sing these songs. So. Exactly. Yeah. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Please do. But what are your thoughts on Ariel, Ariel, you know, Bayman's go. What are your thoughts on Ariel as a Disney princess character? Just, yeah, I just want to know your thoughts. You know, the whole, I want to, I want to escape where I Yeah, I, I have, have a perfect I place. Per, I have a perfect place with a, I need with a, a pretty much a life. <laughs> but this man. I need a man. He, he got the tingle. <laughs> you see I what I'm saying? do much she just saw that's, what, that's what i'm saying <laughs> boat, we'll that's whatever. what i'm saying <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i just want to point out only in a mana was a boat so only Jess, she knew yeah get a boat all the other princesses struggling yeah, all the mermaids yeah. all of like even like outside of that universe like you have sleeping beauty cinderella all of them just like they down bad she has everything why is she chasing this man she's on boat you know? <laughs> boat life <laughs> i mean Actually, and I've actually never, ever, ever thought of it like that. <laughs> I just want to know. Because she really did have it all, right? And, yeah. And it's just, huh, I got to think now. You put me on the spot. 
<laughs> I told you it was coming. <laughs> I thought he was going to have to you say what? What did he say? He said something. <laughs> From the streets, listen. Yeah. Something like Fair they up. say, you don't. Fair sometimes you don't want your Russell Wilson. You just want your future to act like it. Wow. Niggas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> My thoughts. <laughs> yeah, your thoughts. Yeah, your thoughts. <laughs> um, I think it's best to view the Little Mermaid outside of her being a princess. I think it's more about looking at you breaking the norms mm. um, and exploring, right? Like sometimes, and, it, and you see it here in the Bahamas, and that's actually another conversation I recently had with a friend. Lack of exposure will create such a small right. Right. mindset. Mm. And I think the fact that she had this passion inside of her to see what more there was in the world uh, is a great example, it, or is what the theme should be taken. You know, like she was a princess, she had everything she wanted, and she still wanted more. As far as exposure, it wasn't like she wanted more money. She didn't want more things. You know, she had, look at this stuff, isn't it? Like, she had all these she things. She had a dingle hopper. <laughs> exactly. But she just wanted to explore. And I almost feel like she's such a great inspiration for young girls who want to be scientists, right? Like, mm -hmm. you want to get out there and you want to see what the world is like outside of what I've been told it is and what I'm supposed to do. Uh, answered. Yeah, just don't say your, it. Don't sell your it. voice to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are parts of it that we can ignore that that fit my narrative. So <laughs> <laughs> she's like, just take a, take away the good parts, you know. Yeah. But yeah, transitioning from that, we know you're very active with the ocean. You're conservationist, and I'm very active in general now, guys. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we get we, into the transition. We right, right, like right this, this is two part. This my body ain't catch up yet, but this is transition. Switching, yeah, we're switching from the siren to. Shanti. And you don't need Ursula for this. So, <laughs> we're going to online where you are also a cyclist. You're very active. Yeah. I don't know how you keep up with all this stuff. But well, how did I obviously didn't see the mermaid yet. So, <laughs> fail. But uh, how did you get into get cycling? Into that. Yeah. Hmm. So, I would like to formally say because the cyclist community is very. Yeah. I'm no longer an actual cyclist. Mm, okay. I have not been on a road bike on the road in years. <laughs> but I was on the national team in high school um, in my very formative she years. Doesn't. You know, and I was the only girl on the national team for a while. Um, my parents pushed me into it. And again, you know, there's some perks to being a twin. <laughs> Boy, there's some negatives. So anything anything I did, he had to be there. Anything he did, I need to be involved. Wow. Uh, we both played soccer. We both did this. We both did that. Um, eventually, we branched off and got our own identity. I didn't even know about the soccer. Yeah? <laughs> oh. Anyway. <laughs> you were talking about that one. Okay. Whoa. Okay. We okay. talked a little bit about it. But okay. I, I think the minute you tell somebody you played a sport in high school, they assume that you were this amazing athlete. I mean, you could tell them that. They would never know. My legs don't work very well on land. <laughs> They work well on a bike. Oh. Uh. I feel like any time I was off the bench, <laughs> I was on the ground. <laughs> I was right back, and I did my job. I did it well enough to help my team. Sometimes uh. I made mistakes. But I would run up and down that field, and I, would, I was on the team. I think it's important to play your role and play it well. Teamwork. Yeah, as a team member, I cheered on the star athlete. There I'm sure go. they're doing so well now in exactly. life with their soccer career. But no, I... I tried to do UB's soccer team for a year, and it was the same coach from high school, and he very what? quickly was like, what are you doing now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can try out. <laughs> no, I mean, I made the team, but I just, I couldn't stay on it. Um, being a biochem major in UB is really tough. Like, shout out to all of the biochem majors. Oh, well, yeah. You biochem, right? Listen to me. <laughs> if you could get in the class, first of all, great. To complete oh, it, the listen. Get in the class is wow. Yeah, I don't. Well, you, hopefully UB is better. That's when I was at college PTSD. in the Bahamas. Yeah. Oh, I left. Them lines? Yeah. No. So, I feel like I almost fainted on one of them lines. People's waking up 6 a.m. Yeah, that was me. Because I got to come all the way from Coralavo <laughs> to fight with people who live right around the corner. Exactly. No, it was a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I cycled in high school. I competed internationally. Just right in the States, though. Never won a race. Just say you was good. You competed was, internationally, no, though. Never won a race. <laughs> let's let's just put this into perspective. She's saying she's not good. She's never run a race. Internationally, she though. She went off to represent Wait. the country to compete. Because I was a girl. I actually won, <laughs> I actually won one race. Uh -huh. And I have the trophy still. 
And this is a great lesson, right? Like you don't have to be athletic, you have to be determined mm -hmm. and committed. So I obviously trained with the best in the country because we were one small team. And there was, um, we had a tour of the Bahamas coming up, similar to the Tour de France, you know. Okay. And I'm a great team player, man. You could draft off me all day, I'll stay in line, but when it comes time to sprint, I don't want to fall. I was always like, I have, listen, I banged myself right off on that bike. I was tired. When I hit 16, I was like, I'm a girl. I can't do this anymore. My coach yeah. was like, what? I was like, <laughs> my sweet 16 is coming up. I can't fall right now. And I had literally just fallen. But anyway, point is my one race. I'm so proud of this moment, guys. So proud. So we were doing a regular routine. We had other teams in the country, but I mean, we all obviously were Bahamian cyclists. And so my team was myself, my brother, and my neighbor. Mm. And was that a, it's can't be the other thing. Anyway, I think there might have been a fourth one. And then the other team had maybe like four or five other guys. Again, only girl in this race, but I'm competing in that division. So I feel like we were going a little slow. You know, if anyone's familiar with the mechanics of cycling, you know, the, the pack stays at a pace. Yeah. And then you have this person or small group of people called the Peloton. They're the ones to shoot off in the front, and they're typically, they're going to be one of the winners. Everyone else just competing for third, fourth, fifth, whatever's left. Wow. Yeah. And so I say to my team, I'm like, guys, I think, you know, we train faster than this. I think we can, we were like right in the back of Clifton, mind you. We used to be on the road. Mm. And they were like, <laughs> <laughs> on the what bike. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, stay, stay in the queue. Stay in the queue. And so it was like, on the line of four. And usually the person from the back comes to the front and you trail behind them. And that's how the formation is. Um, and you rotate maybe every minute, every mile. You okay. know, your team figures it out. So I got to the back. And so I was like, oh, it's my turn to go in front. I'm leaving these guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I tried. I tried to be a team player. I said, guys, we can pick up our pace. We can pick up our pace. They didn't listen to me. What am I talking about? I'm the like, slowest on the team. <laughs> so our coach, who was riding on his little um, – Scooter on the side of us. He's allowed to ride near us, but not close enough for us to catch his draft. Mm -hmm. um, he says, what are y'all talking about? You know, because he could see us, like, you know, our heads spinning around, like, what are, what are these people talking about on these Speed bikes? Up. Focus, focus. And I said, you know, coach, I think, I think we could break away. Mm -hmm. And he was like, <laughs> shout out to Jeff. Jeff is <laughs> Because he believed in me, but I know he second-guessed this thought. And he, like, looked at me. He looked at the guys, and he was like, y'all don't think y'all could do it? And he was like, we don't know what she's talking about. And he was like, go for it, go for it, baby okay, girl, go okay. for it. I got to the back of the line, I shot off, and because everyone underestimated me, nobody thought to join me as the peloton. None of my teammates, all of them left me. They was like, yeah, go ahead, you could burn out. And he, was, he spat up on the side, and he's like, nah, they talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> you better stay out front. And I was like, what? And I promise you, I rode my heart out, and I won that race. And when they finally crossed the finish line, I was sitting there drinking my water like, uh, you see? How you they like said, yeah, let's out. see if you can do it again. One and done. I retired. Right. One and done. Retire on top. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think, for me, that was just such a big life lesson. Like, if you know you can do something, do it. If you fail, fine. You did it. But if you win... Oh, if you win. Ain't nobody can tell you nothing. No, they couldn't talk to me for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks. Yeah, so. Hmm. I had my one shining glory. But by no means was I a star cyclist. My brother, actually, he was the one who got to compete in the Commonwealth Games. Mm -hmm. So he got to go to India for three weeks. Uh, I don't remember how he did, though. It was a few years ago when I was in high school. But, um, yeah. And now I'm a spin instructor. <laughs> yeah, we're going to transition into that right Beautiful now. Time. Beautiful yeah. transition. So when I first moved back home, and I officially moved back proper in 2021, mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to come back home. I ain't going to lie. I wanted to stay away a little longer. Like It'd yeah. be like that. Yeah. post for a lot of drama. <laughs> It'd be like that. Listen, once you find, when you become part of that world. <laughs> that first world living. Hey, listen, you ordering packages and they come in straight to the door. No picking up, no going through, no tarot party. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just about to say the food deliveries. Oh, man. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I, I wasn't ready to come home. Point is, my dad still cycles. He has not stopped. We were the reason that he even started because my dad was a very, like, involved father. Like, he wanted to do what we were doing. Yeah. Um, so he still cycles every weekend. They go at, like, 4 in the morning, and they do the island rotation. We used to do 40 miles, like, wrap the island. Yeah. 
which felt like nothing on a bike, but we did it. So he still does. And I was like, you know, Dad, I think I want to start cycling again. Okay. And he was like, oh. <laughs> you He's know, like, you have your time, title. You, <laughs> He's like, you know, well, are you sure? I mean, you think you still keep up these days? I mean, it's been a while. And I'm like, here you go. Here we go. Interest, underestimating me. Mm. So I started working out at a local gym. I don't know if I'm allowed to say where it is. Does it matter? MacFit 360. <laughs> West location. <laughs> Um, and they had a spin room. Now, I had done spin before at the other gym wow. in the West. Um, <laughs> and I liked it, right? Because I always enjoyed cycling. Um, it's just something about being on a bike, you know, that it's just, it's a really good ride. It's a really mm -hmm. good time. Really yeah. good workout. Better for your ankles and knees, for sure. And I've injured both my ankles before running. And so it's the safe bet. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I now, I'm a spin instructor there. And it is so fun. I like I take so much joy in crafting my playlists to I was match. Just about the act. Yeah, it's like, all about the playlist. It playlist. really is. Like I've actually done the same like routine twice mm -hmm. <laughs> with different songs, and the second time I did it with better songs. Like let me tell you some Bahamians. If they have vibes, gotta tell. You don't have me. You bumper don't have me. in the air. You don't have like, me in the air. What? Once, <laughs> once I once you learn right. Listen. They will give you, they'll pedal at any resistance if you play in vibes, got down. Most of them will do it to Soka too. But, you know, vibes, world boss. <laughs> <laughs> world boss. World boss. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I take so much joy in, in crafting that and just creating the ride profile. And I literally, I let them know, like, this is going to be a really sweaty one. Mm. Or your legs just get burned. And they're always like, yeah, you was right. And, and it's just, yeah, I have such a great time. Um, I do that every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Check me out. MacFit West, um, <laughs> and it's a great time. Okay. And I found a way to kind of stay safe because, as I said, I've injured my ankle twice, mm -hmm. broken a toe uh, before, so my legs just don't work well on land, and that also plays into my brand. So. Yeah. Yeah. I also have one more question because I did some research. By research, I mean just go on Instagram. <laughs> I see you're a big Chris Brown fan. <laughs> That's Chris Brown made your wow. playlist. You, you yeah. saw him in concert. You saw him in person. I met yeah. him. I didn't just see him in you person. You met him. Oh. I showed at Bub for huh? Chris Brown, and I met the man. Okay. And we had a conversation. He also knows oh, wow. that I'm a marine biologist. We got a tag him in it. <laughs> He's an amazing performer. And... I know that people, I, <laughs> probably, listen, Chris Brown's been my man since I was 13. Like, I, and don't get me wrong, I'm normally a dark-skinned guy, you know, kind of person. But Chris Brown is this, like, I don't know, what's, what's the person? guy from The Little Mermaid? Not Chris Brown of the boat. Chris Brown is the one with the boat. boat. Probably, he yeah. probably does. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Michael Jackson and Chris Brown and thing, but it's like Michael Jackson. It's the performance. <laughs> you know, I, I was getting to a oh, I was like <laughs> to a point, to a point. It's like I don't know what it is about their talent or whatever, but they can get show. like anybody to do like oh easy. yeah, like how how like you could be the biggest toughest guy and you'd be like Michael Jackson on bike. Like turn that up, turn it up. Gotta dance. Gotta dance. Definitely. But like Prince, Prince was saying, like what. Do you have Chris Brown songs on your playlist when it comes to spin glass? So I've had a few. I oh, tried wow. to do a Chris Brown playlist, but not everyone shares the same passion. And I think it's important Fair. to know your audience. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was one of the worst rides ever because I'm on the bike singing and they're like, just like, what song is this? <laughs> this is Chris Brown. I'm like, oh and you my having the time of your life? What? <laughs> it's definitely the ride's not for me. It's for them. So I always have to remember that. Yeah. So yeah, but oh, why so? I don't think about Chris Brown. <laughs> remember the first concert I went to? Mm -hmm. I cried like a baby, and I was like way almost like in the nosebleed seats. But just seeing him, I was like, yeah, like this is real. I look at my friend. I start crying, and I look down, and I see a 12-year-old girl also crying. And my friend wow. was like, do y'all want to stand together? Generations. <laughs> and her dad was like, they probably should. <laughs> I mean, I talk about I snotty. Like, yeah. man, he's great. I didn't cry this time, though. I almost did in front of him, but I was like, I'm not going to cry. He's like, it's okay. I was like, I'm not going to cry. Yeah. I'll cry when I leave. And I did. <laughs> did you give him a little bit did of Did you the... cry, buddy? No, 
<laughs> I actually saw him in a club too. I got into his VIP area. What is Cried happening? Wait a minute. <laughs> what it's is just happening? Exclusive. Listen to me. When you're destined to be with someone, she live a full life in her already. <laughs> already. <laughs> and she she she's been swimming with sharks. She's been 120 feet underwater. She's been in VIP with Chris I'm Brown. Yeah. She has a cycling <laughs> trophy. <laughs> I don't know where it stops. Actually, it doesn't. <laughs> I think I have lived a pretty good life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think like tailoring the playlist specifically to your audience versus yourself? Because at this point I'm assuming like making the ride profiles and the ride itself is the easy part. Do you think the playlist and designing the plays itself is the hardest part? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Because I think it's really important to have proper flow. <laughs> And you can't just like expect the whole ride to be hype, 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 hype. The warm up needs to be something fast paced. For the heavy rides, you want something like with a really good like cadence so that people actually want to mm. push. So I love giving some good bouju or you know like something for the yeah. heavier parts. They love champion boy, what a sec. So you need something really like steady pace for that. And then obviously for the sprints, you need something where it's like the chorus picks it up, not just like the whole song is hype. So there's a science to it. I'm telling you, and you need to know the BPM because, like, if you the beats per minute, yeah, FYI, yeah, yeah. you never know, yeah, right? Yeah, they need but to know, if yeah. you don't know that in the song, you think a song is fast, mm-hmm. and then when you get up on that bike, and like we do rhythm riding, so obviously to the beat of the song is what we try to match. People be pedaling at like twenty, and you you want them a little faster? Nope, the song don't match that. And we have rhythm. Mm. We ain't about to go off beat. Yeah. It's just unnatural. That happens to me when I work out too. You know, like some songs you play in the car, you be like, but it's hype. <laughs> as soon, as, soon this as you hype. get in the gym, it's like, this is dead, but This is dead. R and B. Yeah. Like, it, it gets you in the zone. It gets you in the zone though. Like like Drake as well. Drake. Are you heartbroken? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That motivates some it's people. Let's get you relaxed. You want to be relaxed at the gym? Wait, wait, wait. Because I ain't like, wait, in the gym, I just in the future, I ain't angry. Like, you know, I mean, being angry. That works for some people. Like, yeah. <laughs> Are you angry all the time that if you go to the gym and listen to future, you're also angry there? Like, something pissed me off. <laughs> wherever you could get your motivation Listen, is where you get sometimes it. the gym is a decompression chamber and not necessarily a high place like imagine you on pre-workout and then you go from pre-workout to listening to T Grizzly and then you go to deadlift <laughs> Grizzly. The, the How old player. am I? You're too tense. You're way too tense. Like, it's, it's very aggressive. He's a gangster rapper from Literally just gangster Detroit. Is he a, like a mumble gangster rapper? No, or? Yeah, no Detroit. Yeah. Oh, what was it? Young boy. He's not talking about I had a friend who lifts weights to sometimes Disney songs. I was like, which one are you? Mulan. 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 The Lion King is perfect to lift too as well. Just put that up though. Real talk, I real talk. You gotta try it. Wow. You gotta try it. You gotta try Coming it. Coming soon to a spin studio. Name. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. A Disney or a Lion King. Yes. Okay. I'll, yes. I'll check it out. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm sold. I'm sold. Can you feel the love tonight? My class better not be mad at me. I'm gonna blame you. <laughs> it would be like. That's a nice warm down pace, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah you're right. Yeah, but too slow. No, no, you got You have to double it. You have to double it. Yeah. If you yeah. if you're riding, you have to double it. Yeah, definitely. It's like, but there there are certain songs like Disney songs, certain musical songs like that have a good enough cadence, like specifically for lifting, that you could kind of just zone into in a certain parts. Like if you go to something, say a lot, like Prince Ali, like if you just get ready to lift, dun, da, 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 and then boom, like one. I does. can't listen to music when I, I lift. Anything depends on the record too. Though. It yeah. definitely yeah. does. Like if we doing a hard record that day, I probably listen to rap. Yeah. I gotta save myself up. Listen, Nikki rock. and Meg is getting me there. 70s rock. I ain't gonna lie. Low key, I spice up some vinyls for <laughs> Honestly, like, hold on. I was like, I yes. Ice Spice, ladies and gentlemen. I did not expect that. I was not on that. the Ice Spice train, but recently. You have no choice but to be on the train at this point. <laughs> recently, my Spotify been just slipping her things in. <laughs> so you like, like it. You like it. Like, oh, wow. Okay. It's a, it's a song with um, Gloria and Cardi. Yes. Oh, of course, man. Oh, me off, God. Of course. Caught me off, God. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's sometimes you just ignore the lyrics. Yeah. Y'all do bizarre, bro. <laughs> I don't ignore the lyrics. That's okay. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I guess to close up, if we don't have any more questions, you have any more questions? Nah, questions? I just oh, one important question. Because we've been talking about the shanty and the siren. Now with the Chris Brown, did you give him a little bit of the siren? Mm, did he have the a good question. Did you? Yeah. I don't honestly, and I think very highly of myself. I don't think Chris Brown had any interest in me. <laughs> Wow. Zero. Wow. No, but no. No, this is reserved. Fair. Yeah. But no, reserved he did. We got, we got a really nice hug in. <laughs> he gave me two hugs. One was on camera. One was off camera. And yeah. He's a nice guy. I mean, I think, and one of my friends, the one friend I mentioned earlier, he was like, you're going to go meet him and be like, he's the worst person ever. Don't meet your heroes. And I was scared because I was only in Amsterdam for three days. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to meet Chris Brown Monday night, and he canceled. He consumed too much of the regular things that you do in Amsterdam, apparently. And he was just not Fail. in the state, right? And I was scared. I was like, man, they was willing to give us a refund. They was willing to give us concert tickets to a different concert or whatever we wanted to do. And I was like, no, I came here. I didn't even care about the concert. I came here for this one once in a lifetime experience. I'm not dropping no bubble like that again. <laughs> and so they were like, well, tomorrow's a concert. Tomorrow's another meet and greet. I was like, I don't want to go to the concert. I just want to come to the meet and greet. So I stayed up. 11.30 p.m. went back to the concert hall, wow. and then I finally got to meet him. Don't give up on your dreams, guys. <laughs> but um, he's a great guy, and I think you got to go out there and do the things you want. Meet Chris Brown, yes, but just anything you want. Like, I never thought I'd be flying to Amsterdam. Exactly. Period, yeah. right? I was all around Europe just because I wanted to meet Chris Brown. And, and I've gathered so much more life experience from everything else that I had to do <laughs> while I was away just because I went to go meet Chris Brown. So... You may think you have everything, like Ariel, but there's so much Experience more Experience more, yeah. And you never know if you like other things better. Like, I didn't think I ever would want to live in the UK, mm. and I had to go there for school, full ride, and I absolutely loved it, and I did not want to come back home, and COVID made it so much nicer because I got to stay there, and like, okay. yeah. Yeah, I have a thing about the cars, so I'm like... About the where, road? where are the cars? Where oh, are the, the gas car- stations? You walk and you cycle. I had a bike in Cambridge. Oh, okay. I used to ride okay. my bike everywhere. Cambridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was in Cambridge. Oh, you were there. Too? University. Uh, of Cambridge. I was in, I was in uh, Southwest London. Okay. Yeah. I was like what? a couple minutes. Why is that face? What couple, is that? A couple mean? minutes away from Wimbledon. It wasn't bad. Where y'all? Okay. It wasn't Cambridge. <laughs> yeah, it was not Cambridge. Like, you know what? Like, we have a little bit of like top boy like slide. You know what? Like the proper thing up north, like you guys. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Bro, I spent a year there. Like, I got it down. <laughs> Let me tell you something about me. I've sounded the way that I've sounded my entire life. Mm-hmm. And people assume, oh, it's because you went to school in the States. No, I moved to the States and they said, there's no way you lived in the Bahamas. My accent is not very easily influenced. Yeah. I'm sorry that yours is so weak. No, it's, it's not that. I can do <laughs> multiple accents. <laughs> yeah, Don't disrespect but... the boy. <laughs> I think the only thing I picked away from that was saying, are you mad? Like, that was my favorite thing to say to people. Like, I still say it here now. If someone asks me a stupid question, are you mad? No, where's the food, bro? <laughs> I picked up swear down. Like, you know, it's like, I swear to God. Like, it's, I swear down. I wow. I like swear down. I like saying proper, too. Proper. Like, I want to take a proper shower. I want to have yeah. a proper meal. Like, I like proper, though. Proper. Proper, proper, proper thing. sounds, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's an interesting experience, though. But like I say, we, like, ladies and gentlemen, just to recap, it's a full life Swimming with the sharks. Remember, your first shark is always your hardest. Exactly. <laughs> if you go to 120 feet down, just make sure you know you, you, you transition up a little bit slowly. Very don't get sirens. Yeah. They don't bite, but they do kill you. <laughs> <laughs> they sing you. You have too, long you know? hair too. It makes it easier to mm. pull you down. You know? True. <laughs> and that's why they have the gate around the blue hole near the mall, the mermaid blue hole. That's fail. No, they never that story. Fair. Kids no. kept getting. Well, no. I did have all those yeah. stories. That was real. Like, they had to put... <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know it's real, but I just... Like, like, making this up. I just, no, you ain't making it up, but it's, you know? Yeah, that, uh, most blue holes across the Bahamas. You thought it was the what? You thought it was like Chick Johnny. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, we're we'll being very, very serious. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. fell in that a lot. Yeah, yeah, they and, definitely fell in it. Yeah, though. but it, yeah, there's a current pull you under. Yeah. yeah. But I have. If I would, I don't frequent that blue hole. Oh, they're the mermaids. The mermaids, what? 
If you go to a family <laughs> island and you swim in a blue hole, sometimes you feel something brush past you. No? you never been in a blue hole? <laughs> Especially the ocean blue holes. Not just the yeah, ones in the middle of the land. Wow. The ocean ones where you're in the ocean and all of a sudden it's a blue hole. Oh, yeah. yeah. They thrive. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I swear, I swim in a blue up there. There's Andres, yeah. Buckless. Yeah, I've been to the ones, like, on land, but, like, never one, like, out in the ocean. Yeah. Those are the freakiest ones for me. Like, you be walking on the sand, and all of a sudden you drop? Oh, you, yeah. You're brave. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Full life. Yeah. I drop. But with that full life, <laughs> I have one final question. At this point in your life, what do you think you're the most fanatical about right now? Working out. What? <laughs> Actually, like yeah, I literally, as of this we year, we got another we one. We got another one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, I've always like passively been the type of person to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, I think becoming a spinning instructor helped that. I mean, I'm now considering getting a Zumba certification. I recently, as in like maybe a month or two ago, started lifting mostly squats of course I'm a woman <laughs> yeah. and i have been so impressed with the the um i guess is it growth yeah, but i don't mean yeah. physical growth just, but i mean like just internally yeah i never thought like i actually just did a pr which may not sound like a lot to your some. brain is rewired. 185 right and i was like this is like a person like i, I could lift i could Robots. squat a person yep. you know and so hoping to hit 200 soon because I did a pretty good amount of reps with 185. And I just, I don't know. It's just something about, and shout out to my accountability buddy for always getting me in the gym in those earlier days. Because just something about it is like you wake up and you feel tired, right? Mm -hmm. Like today or yesterday. Like I've been having a really tired week. And it's just something about when you finally just get in there and you just do it. And you, even if you just say, I only do this like yesterday, if I may. I'm in a run challenge right now on uh -huh. Nike Run Club. Shout out to Melissa for starting this challenge. And the goal is to get to 90 miles by the end of the month. Not who gets there the fastest, you know. Just everyone complete 90 miles. But me, being the competitor that I am, I've been, like, running the leaderboard. Every day I'm running three, going back in the afternoon, doing another two. Wow. Um, and recently my friend, she's in the U.K., and I'm, I got to ask her how she's tracking her miles because all of a sudden – <laughs> so she naturally got she, like 0.6 on you listen I, and so like i said the first seven days of the challenge it started june 1st today's the 10th i had been number one to the point where the coordinator messaged me was like someone in my other group chat was like who is this jeff girl tell her to calm down and i was like you put me in a challenge i'm gonna rock this like yeah. don't play with me so all of a sudden i wake up check the leaderboard and this is my friend my co-worker she's eight miles ahead of me I said, there's no way humanly possible. I mean, there is, but it's just eight miles. So yesterday I went to the gym. I said, anyway, I'm going to just do three, maybe four tomorrow because I'm feeling a little tired. I did five miles in one go, and I was like, wow. Like, I never thought I'd ever be at the point in my life where I could get on a treadmill. I mean, I like the road too, but it's, be, it's hot these days, guys. Yeah. Don't get no heat stroke. But, yeah, I was just that's like, that's well, that, that too. That's and it. just <laughs> Nassau niggas who in cars early in the morning. <laughs> I've heard many stories of people oh almost, yeah, almost oh getting yeah. accosted, oh like, yeah. like this that's country. But yeah. that's another, yeah, that's a completely another topic. We get all these high school graduates and not enough jobs, like, yeah. whatever. But point is, yeah, I think that's become something I'm fanatical about. Like, right now, this very minute, it's getting these miles in. Like, I did again, I did three miles this morning. I'm actually thinking, like, man, if I didn't have to go to this pig roast tonight, I was probably going to go back in the gym after this run some more miles wow but yeah it is addicting i must say that it is <laughs> like and i again i never thought that i would be that person never saw it never saw it coming and you just have to do it and it really is like building that habit mm -hmm. um, and you just feel better exactly you feel so exactly. much better after a good sweat they say healing is in salt water the ocean tears and sweat that's my closing thought wow that's a great way to end <laughs> you were with us you have Lashanti the Siren. Remember, this is the Fanatic Islanders. Your home for sports and sports entertainment. Thank you for having us be your host for this episode. Anything you want to say, there? Oh, you was closing? Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you listen to us on any of the audio platforms, don't forget to leave us a five-star review. Like us, um, don't forget to leave your comments. We'd love to hear from you guys here. We can best help you all. And ladies and gentlemen, we're looking forward to the Sirens, you know, studio sessions. Yeah. And that, that alto voice coming ah. very soon.
Also, make sure to tune into Siren Sundays every Sunday live at Facebook or YouTube at 4 p.m. We are in our eighth season right now, but you can check out all those past videos on my YouTube channel, Lashanti the Siren, as well as my Facebook page, or you can check out my website, LashantiJump.com. And we shall see you again in the future, maybe at some point. Yeah, we'll talk about the government then. Sure. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs>